In the previous video, we took a look at how to embed a Tableau dashboard by uh, using the embed code. Now, that is a quick way to get up and running and to show something really quickly to your audience. But in this video, we're going to take a look at using Tableau's JavaScript API to do this. Now, if you've been following along, uh, the first thing that we want to do is actually uh, remove the content that we already copied from Tableau. So I'm going to remove the whole bit that I have here. So I'm just back to where we have just the title of the page. So if I go here to the page, this is what we had earlier. If I now hit save, you'll see that the dashboard disappears. Okay. Um, I already mentioned in one of the previous videos is that, for example, we can see here document, which corresponds what is in here at the top. Okay. So I can actually uh, rename this and call this my dashboard, for example. But then hit save, you can see that automatically updates. So it's still going great. Um, one thing to mention here, though, is that um, um, this looks really old school. Uh, this is using the Tableau browser font. Um, sorry, the default <laughs> the default browser font. And um, lots of the things that we'll do, like buttons and stuff, will also look um, very old school. Um, but we'll look in the later videos of how to make this look a little bit prettier. Okay, so let's have a look at the documentation here. Now, this is Tableau's JavaScript API documentation for version 2021. And um, a few things that we need to do. First of all, in order to get started, we need to create a web page. That's already what we've done. And we need to include the JavaScript API for the Tableau server that you're using. We are using Tableau public. So for us, that's going to be um, the Tableau public link. But if you're using this on your own Tableau server, you put in uh, your server name here, and then it basically looks for a folder called tableau2.min.js. It's a minified JavaScript file. And we're going to use this particular JavaScript file because this one contains lots of the code that we can reference. And th this makes it easier for us to, to use Tableau. This is a very common thing that you do in web development, reference um, other packages, or in this case, what they call a CDN. Um, and this is from a, a, a C, basically the CDN link is your Tableau server. After this, um, what we need to do is create a container element, so a diff element, um, which can hold our visualization. So in this particular thing called a diff, this will where the dashboard will go. We then need to write a particular function. So we're going to take a look in JavaScript how to create a function. And then we need to initialize the function to make it show up. Then we can see here at the bottom, we have an example for this called th this thing called storm tracking. But we want to do it for the dashboard that we had earlier. So um, other things that we have here in the documentation, I will put the link in the descriptions as well, is a link to what's new. So if you want to be kept up to date about new um, additions to the API, you can click on what's new. So for example, a few things changed. So that's kind of uh, very useful for you to see. There's also a tutorial link, uh, which you can go through in your own time. Um, and the samples are really good, actually. So I reference these samples a lot, and they show some examples, some basic code for you to, to play with. And we have the reference. So the reference is all of the different uh, methods that you have. So a method on the Tableau JavaScript API is, for example, export to PDF. So for example, you can create a button which references the method to export to PDF. And then it will generate a PDF for you. So we're going to learn about that as well in this video series. And the very first thing that we're going to do now, though, is let's go back to uh, samples and go into basic embed. And um, in here, we can see that it renders a basic um, visualization. But I'm just going in here to copy the script code. So I'm just going to copy this whole URL that references the uh, location of Tableau public. So once you've copied that, you can go into your um, index.html file and I can put that in here and I put it in my head tag. So you want to put it in the head and if you now save it, 
you will see that my dashboard here, the one that we have here also refreshes. So every time when you save it, it refreshes. And if I now inspect it, so right click the page and go to inspect. What we'll see is this is always the way that I use to troubleshoot problems with my web page or if things are not loading. If I now go to the network tab and I refresh the page, what you will see is that the browser loads the index file, but it also loads the Tableau min.js file that we put in here. And it also references uh, the latest Tableau min.js file that's 2.4.0. Okay, so those things are being loaded. So that means the moment you see that, that means the Tableau JavaScript API is loaded and that's successful. And now we can start using this. So if we close this box, what we now want to do is uh, we want to create a container. And in this container, we're going to display our um, visualization. So in order to create that in HTML, we need to type in diff and VS Code will autocomplete that for us. But and this this needs to be this needs to be this has this can be empty and that's what we're gonna do. But what we need to do is we need to find a way to reference this container in our JavaScript file. So JavaScript uh, normally kind of talks to your HTML file, and it's doing that by using IDs and classes. Okay, so I'm gonna give this an ID and I'm just gonna hit enter. Now you can call this anything in Tableau documentation. They call this the vis container. So let's also call this the vis container, but you can give this any name that you want, as long as you reference that name as well in the JavaScript file. So if I now hit save here, my page refreshed as well. Well, nothing is showing up because there's no content in there, but you can always check if um, your um, container is actually there by just going into inspect. And now we're going to body and I can see that my this container is there. That's really good, right? Now, what we then want to do is we want to create a JavaScript file in which we're going to reference this particular container. So I'm just going to pop open on the side. I'm going to click on the plus to create an app.js file. You can also call this whatever you want. Um, I tend to call mine app.js. JS is very important as the file extension because that tells uh, everyone that we're using JavaScript in this file. Okay. Um, now, the very first thing that I will always do when I create a new JavaScript file is I'm just going to console.log. Um, I am here. Okay. That basically um, logs something to the browser console saying that I am here. Now, if I do that, and I go into my browser and I'm going to inspect that. Here we can see these are the elements in the page, but we have the console here. And in the console, you can start logging things. Now, if I refresh this and I refresh it a few times, it doesn't matter. My message here doesn't show up. And there's a reason because this I am here is um, the, the JavaScript file itself is not referenced in the HTML yet. Okay, so I'm just gonna close this thing. And uh, what we're gonna do is here at the bottom of my body, and this is where people tend to put these uh, JavaScript files, you can also put them in the script here, and potentially defer it, but you want to load this as the last thing on the page. So I'm just going to type in SC and VS Code will autocomplete that to SC and we're going to put in a source. And the source is going to be the JavaScript file that we created. Now, um, this sits in the same folder, so we can just do dot forward slash app JS. And if I now hit save, you will see that I am here shows up. So that's really good. And um, now what we want to do is we want to start creating some code so we can actually um, render the dashboard there. So I'm just going to my app JS. And the first thing that we need to do is if we go back to the example here, is we need to create a, uh, in this case, there's a function. And in the function, it references the container. Now, I tend to do these things outside of my function, but that's just whatever you prefer. 
Um, Tableau is also using a var here. Var is a keyword that's been used in JavaScript a lot. But nowadays we tend to use uh, a constant or, or let. In this case, I'm just gonna use const. And I'm gonna say const, um, and I can call this container diff, for example. And what I then wanna do in order to reference this, I need to look at my document. And I wanna get an element. And the element that I wanna get is my this container. Okay? Again, this variable here that you're creating can be any name, but this this container needs to reference what is in there. Okay? So container diff, this container, then hit save, nothing really happens. It just initializes this variable. Um, let's also then create a constant for our URL. And that is going to be the um, Tableau dashboard URL. So I'm going into, um, uh, let me see, where did I leave? Yeah, this is um, my Tableau public. And in here, if we click on the share button again at the bottom, there's a link here. So I wanna copy that link. And again, not the link in the URL bar. And I'm gonna paste that in here. Um, actually we wanna remove some of this stuff because we don't really need it. At the end, everything after the question mark, including the question mark can be removed. Now we can see this is the URL. It's good stuff. Um, so we got the place where it needs to go, which is the container. We got the URL of the dashboard where it needs to go in. Um, what we now need to do is um, we need to create a function. And in Tableau's documentation, they use the thing called initVis. Uh, you can again name this function whatever you want. So um, I'm just gonna call this function and let's follow conventions. Let's say initVis. And um, this, in this function, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to create a new visualization object, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, we can just use uh, let this equals new tableau dot this, okay? Now, what we're now doing is here we can see Tableau and Tableau is basically uh, what we're referencing in the HTML file. So this script here, we're now accessing that one by accessing the methods on this Tableau object. So we're saying let this equals new Tableau dot this. Then we need to give it the first parameter that we need to give it is our container diff. So that is the, the, the actual condition, or sorry, the uh, variable that we have here. Um, then we need to give it a, a URL. And then the last thing that we need to give it is some options. And we haven't created those options yet, but let's put options in here. And let's actually create that down here as well. So we're gonna say const options equals. And this is not, um, so for example, here we have just a string and here we have a reference to an HTML element, but in this options, what we want is a, um, what they call a JavaScript object, okay? So in this options element, what we can do is, and we'll look at that in the other videos as well, uh, we can put some, some things in here, okay? We can put, um, if we want, for example, to hide the tabs, now hiding the tabs, what that will do, if you use Tableau Server or Tableau Online, it's kind of hide, kind of this is the toolbar and on the top sometimes you have the tabs. You can hide those if you want um, on the moment that it's loaded, okay? So constant options, hide tabs, and we can potentially set that to true. It won't do anything really on Tableau Public. Um, and we can also um, on first interactive, which is a uh, method uh, from Tableau which basically says, hey, when the dashboard is able to, when you're able to interact with it, what do you want to do? Well, in the docs, they say they want a console.log and we can say, hey, my dashboard is ready. Okay, so those are my options and we're gonna look in other videos as well how to, to further do that. So if I hit save, we now have the container, the URL, the options, 
And we have a function here. Function init this is let this equals new tableau this. Now, that's great. Um, if I hop into my dashboard here, the actual web page, it doesn't actually show up here. And that is because what we need to do is this init this needs to basically render, it needs to be executed, this function needs to be executed the moment the page is being opened. Okay, And we can do that in um, JavaScript in various ways. The one that I tend to use for simple HTML files is do document dot add an event listener. So basically add an event listener. So listen when something happens on the document. And where we want to listen for is if the DOM content was loaded. And what we then want to execute is this init this. Okay? So DOM content loaded basically means when the rest of the HTML document has been loaded. So if my header has loaded and my container has loaded, that's when we want to execute this init this. So if I now hit save here, what we'll see is that my Tableau dashboard shows up here. Okay. Now we haven't really done anything in terms of like sizing of this dashboard. And that is something we'll do um, in the next uh, video. Uh, actually, it's, yeah, that, that's something we'll do in the next video. But to recap, what we've done here is we uh, basically first made sure that we are referencing our JavaScript file. We then created a, a link to our HTML to the this container. Um, this is the URL. We kind of hard coded this to to link to my um, uh, my Tableau public dashboard. We then created some uh, um, an options object where we had one parameter for uh, high tabs, in which we set to true. And on first interactive is when the when the actual dashboard starts loading, execute the function where we are logging. Hey, my dashboard is ready. We can actually see this one. So if I inspect the page go to my console, we can now see, hey, my dashboard is ready. So that's pretty cool. And that's logging um, in my console. And um, this is the actual visualization, or actually, sorry, the actual function that we're executing the moment the website has finished loading. Okay. Now, in the next video, we'll take a look at some of these more options that we have and also how to interact with elements in a web page.